So it's a happy anniversary uh, to our big sister Joy FM and our group, the Multimedia Group. Uh, and we're sharing this with you. It's been 25 years of excellence in broadcasting, which has impacted just about every Ghanaian, including families. We'll share our impact story with you. Enjoy it. Here's one just before we go. Uh, Raman Foden, thank you very much for your message. Enjoy our impacting story. I, I, kept, I kept asking, what's it for? He said, it's for a new radio station. I said, I want to work there. So for me, it's more about the people whose lives have been impacted. Individuals. People whose stories we've done. East region, an old woman in her 80s has a wish to sleep on a mattress before she dies. She's been abandoned by her family. She says uh, <coughs> that she doesn't have, looking at her, her house, if she got eyes, maybe this is not how it was going to be. So she she's appealing to the government that if they can build a nice room for her, a nice place where she can sleep and get her a nice mattress to also lie on and then get her nice food to eat, she'll be very happy. the story of Yahya Kwanjit. <laughs> Kwanjit's wish becomes reality after the broadcast of her story by Joy News. The audience donated various items including the mattress she so wished for. <laughs> Far away from Kwanjit's village is Dare Puga, another woman in her 80s who slept in a madhouse with no door. Dari Puga is a cured leper and like Yahya Kwanjit, had been abandoned by her family. It's food. If she gets money, she can buy food and cook and eat. She's happy. Apart from that, what again does she need? But following a Joy News documentary on her situation, her life changed forever. The woman who lived in a very depressing condition got a new home. Thanks to Ghana's Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who watched her story. This is what the multimedia group has stood for since its inception 25 years ago giving voice to the voiceless and shining a light on society's ills. Let's say I'm on your phone and say, 
ever power, and But how did a company with only 12 employees grow into the largest independent commercial media organization in Ghana? Began with the dream of one entrepreneur, Kwesi Chum, to provide a 24-hour radio service in Ghana. At the time, this was non-existent in the country. The company now directly employs over 600 people across its six radio brands, three online assets, and Ghana's first free multi-channel television brand, all in 25 years of operation. In 2009, the launch of Multi TV finally made television truly available to every hamlet in even the remotest part of Ghana, providing multi-channel television and radio access to areas which were formerly deprived of any media coverage. Multi TV has also been a platform to export local Ghanaian TV channels across Africa via satellite. This documentary presents the story of the multimedia group, the stories of the people whose hard work resulted in the creation and sustenance of this media enterprise. I remember Kwesi um, <clears throat> Chum came to my house. I wasn't there. And I think he left a message <clears throat> that if I could meet him at a uh, Boni coffee shop. For me, Anan Fosen, then the host of GBC's morning show. I didn't know who he was, you know, so it's like, who am I going to look for? But he was very much on time and he pointed me out, you know. So we met at a coffee shop and said, oh, he wanted us to meet. Uh, in Dan, Kenel Dan Chum's house, you know, I think uh, about a week or so. So, so I agreed. But prior to that, um, I was told in GBC rumors that there was going to be a private radio station. Skepticism fell into my mind because I never thought, you know, with, with the advent of GBC and what was currently going on in the country that we'd be allowed to, to start private radio. But hitherto, it happened, uh, we met, and that was basically how Kwesi and I uh, uh, met. And so I would say that was the very beginning mm. of the beginning of, of Joy FM. The skepticism continued, but Tommy and Fosen washed it all off with the resolve to try something new. Having gone through the thought process of, wow, private radio in Ghana, is it going to work? People were very skeptical. Is it going to work? How long is it going to be in existence? Am I going to lose my job? You know, all these things went through my mind. But I said to myself, there are two things that I'm looking at. Either I stay in this street jacket kind of thing, or take the risk, go outside, start something. But I had the conviction that it was going to work because this was the first private you know, commercial radio station. So obviously, the support base was going to be huge. The team, led by CEO Kwesi Chum, quickly moved into action, creating new programs. We were determined to at least start with something. So Kwesi, uh, the late Dusty Wayne, and myself met in my living room. Uh, three huge bowls of fufu that would set us, you know, starting the discussion. Of course, with pens and paper, so as we were, you know, choppy were coming up with ideas and stuff like that. So everything was done in the sitting room, but we had a battle trying to start up the morning. We came up with the, the morning show, uh, the Joy morning show, uh, uh, AM on Joy FM, you know, which was a little bit of confusion, but we know AM is like morning. Yeah. But then eventually we settled for the super morning show. Uh, then Kwesi looked at Accra itself being a cosmopolitan uh, uh, area, and so we settled in for the cosmopolitan mix. 
And then I adapted the uh, lunchtime rhythms from a program I was doing on GDC, you know, switch the name. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we we're looking at block programming, you know, th uh, three hours, two hours, three hours, two hours. And then drive time, realized that people were going to go, go home at a particular time, which was illegal anyway, because you're not supposed to go home at <laughs> before five. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we came up with all the programs. In between that, we had an hour to spare, and so we came up with the DJ's choice. That's where Azikiza Jr. came in. Yeah. Said, okay, it's your one hour. You choose whatever music you want, entertain the people. And so that's how we got the entire programming for, for, for Joy FM. Joy FM soon became the talk of town, but as a station to be built into the go-to platform for the most credible news and current affairs, a news team had to be put together. We're thinking about how, uh, what the transition will be like, because there's never been a private radio station. Fred Chidi was the first editor. Some scouts had come around GBC and were talking to some of our seniors. People like Tommy Alan Forsen, the late Dusty Wayne, and Kofi Chapon. And so in one of those interactions, we happened to be around, so we're nosing around as to what was happening. Then we heard that Tommy had left GBC, together with Dusty Wayne and then Kofi Chapon. Evidence to suggest there's an abuse. Okay. What I can say is that because of um, what we told by uh, Dr. Henry Bruce over there. Right. I accepted the offer and then I started as uh, the first voice in terms of news on, on Joy FM. One after the other, more people joined, taking charge of different aspects of production. Dory Nando. I knew, a, a, I knew a guy who was in touch with Kwesi Chum and the rest of the team when they started, you know, putting the radio jingles and stuff together. And so I spoke to him and I said, well, this is something I wanted to try out whilst I'm at home. And he said, okay. So then he brought me to see Kwesi Chum one fine day. And um, I said, they asked me if I had an audition tape. I said, what's an audition tape? I didn't have one. I didn't know how I looked like. And then they said, okay, well, we'll give you a couple of newspapers and then we'll ask you to read them out loud so we can hear. And they said, oh, we like, we like the way you sound and all of that. Can you come tomorrow morning? And I was like, okay. So the next morning I came out here and then they gave me a couple of scripts to read through. And then around about 11 o'clock, Fred Chidi came with the strips of paper with news written in pen on there. And then he said, you're reading the news at noon. I'm like, oops. So I went on, I read the news at noon that day, and that was the beginning of my story here at the Multimedia Group. I was doing three bulletins, six in the morning, 12, and then 6 p.m. Then one day I went to work and Chrissy called me and said, he wants us to do business news. I said, wow, business news, okay. So what goes into business news? Financial reporting. I went into my, my notes, and then decided to do corporate news and then do some uh, foreign exchange uh, reports. So I would, I remember I would go around the Forest Bureau, get the rates, and then do some analysis with um, Mr. Adekoka. He, he had a, a Forest Bureau around Asalam Down. So I'll go to him and then he will, he will do the analysis for me. To tell the truth, I didn't understand what the man was saying. When, when, when it comes to the financial part, the CD was trading at so and so and so, and at the Forex, and then at the interbank rate. At that time, I didn't understand. So it got to a point and Kwesi said, we need to uh, develop ourselves. So I signed up at the Ghana Stock Exchange to do the course. And it was at that point that my eyes opened to the financial issues and so on. Mark Okrekumante, Gabi Ajete, now a barrister in the UK, hosted various shows, including the drive time on Joy. I had lots of opportunities because, like I said before, uh, Kwesi had a vision for the station. And he was getting us there somehow. But one thing I'll always say that he was good at was trying to give the presenters exposure. Now, for me, I mean, I was fortunate enough, I traveled quite a bit before Joy, but, but 
because he still would make you go to an NAB conference, and that's uh, the NAB conference all the way in the States, in New Orleans we went, I went to, with, um, with Samet and a whole uh, group of other people. And he'd make you, give you the opportunity to get that exposure, to improve yourself, to move, you know, to, to want to get better, to improve the show that you're on, improve the quality of what you're presenting, and what you're bringing to the, to the, the station. So uh, that was good for me in the sense that I got to do things that I hadn't thought of doing before. Carl Tofu. It became like a point where you could hear other views apart from government views. They used to have a portion called Ghana Speaks. Mm -hmm. After they've done major discussions and whatnot, they would then open the phone lines. And it was a case of people listening, giving their views, so long as it wasn't defamatory. The multimedia group has over the years established itself as a fiercely independent voice speaking truth to power, reporting and exposing corruption in public institutions. It's not about us, it is about the people. That's not all. Our audience and communities are our anchor and the reason we operate. A lot of air time on the various platforms of the group are dedicated to human interest stories. Stories that bring change in the lives of ordinary people. Nice food to eat. She'll be very happy. The company has done stories with far-reaching impact on the people. To be locked away, it is a difficult thing, but the worst thing of all is to be locked away and to be forgotten. Prison reforms as a result of a series of documentaries by Joy News, Locked and Forgotten and Left to Rot. The message I bring you today is that you're not forgotten, and I've seen with my own two eyes what I have heard many a time about the conditions in our prisons. A new mother and baby unit for the Confuanochi Teaching Hospital following a Joy News documentary, Next to Die, which highlighted the death of babies at the hospital. A 500,000 Ghana City school block for a community built by telecoms giant MTN after a Joy News agenda story on the community. It's 20 minutes after 9 on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy 99.7 FM in Accra and on our affiliates across the country. Later this morning, I will take you to a little village known as Esuboy. An entire village battling river blindness saved after a joy news story. Uh, it's in the Ashanti region. It's near a forest known as Abofu. And my brother, Ohim Interior, uh, tells me, as I spoke to him last night, he told me a very sad story. Uh, a story of uh, people living in a community where there's no portable drinking water. The village has also been overtaken by black flies. I'll take you to a... Many boreholes built by our partners across the country following stories highlighted by the Joy New Safe Water Project. This is when you take the brand joy, it's been interpreted as Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. Yes, um, we, we, don't, we don't do what we do for ourselves. We serve the community and we also live in the community. So the community's interests at all times is what we seek to um, push and, and, and advance. So those are the core values on which the multimedia uh, business and brands uh, have been built. Multimedia Group's influence has not been felt in these areas only. The company has established itself by far as the most trusted source of election information, diligently covering every election and accurately projecting the final outcome since 1996. Let's start with the permutations for President John Dramani Bahama. There are 69 constituencies to go with a registered voter population we know now of 3,827,081. Now, at the current average turnout of 68%, 
This translates into 2,652,483 votes. For President Mahama to reach 5.3 million, he needs 1,598,355 votes. We therefore project it is almost statistically impossible for President John Dramani Mahama to achieve 50% plus one. Our projection is that Nana Adodankwa Kufado will win the 2016 presidential election. Governments over the years have often criticized the group as one championing an agenda against them. I would say the beauty around that is you don't hear it only from uh, one divide or one side, you know. Um, you hear it from one party, uh, let's, let's, let's put them as a political party, and you hear, you hear it also from another political party. Now if, in this case, the two largest parties both say you are biased, then it means that you are not necessarily pushing anybody's interest per se. Why would you be biased or why would we be biased? We are not. We don't set out from home, come here in the morning, run the whole day and say we're going to advance a certain agenda against one party or another. For many people, like Samira Baumia, wife well, of the Vice it's President, it's Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and Imani Africa and President, Franklin uh, Kujo, who have both been part of our loyal audience for years. This is a good sign. I think every government has had issue with you at some point, so it must say something. Um, but it's not necessarily a negative thing. It may be because you're doing your job and it may make people uncomfortable. But it could also be that in certain instances, mm. some lines were crossed. But I think so far it's been healthy. You've provided a platform for people to express themselves, share their opinions, share their views, their visions with the public. Myself, the first time I met you was when I came onto your show. And um, that was before we were in power and we were in opposition. And at the time, you provided that opportunity for all sides to come on and speak. So it's a testament to your commitment to working in the space, the democracy space, advancing democracy. So it's not just about the people in power, but it's everybody who aspires to be in power. What is your message? How do we put it out there for the benefit of the people? Government agencies have come after you because you said the obvious. Uh, and so um, rather than dice it up and say that, well, as an individual listening in and not being a participant on the conversation. Kwejo Ampofo, DJ Black. I'm a head of music here at Jory 99.7 FM. I host the weekend warmer on Fridays, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. and the open house party Saturdays, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. <laughs> say that you know for those I looked up to when I started DJing like the Funk Master Flex, uh, uh, the, the, the West Woods, the African Bambatas, you know uh, DJ Tony Touch, all those international DJs, these guys are still rocking parties and they haven't stopped so who am I to stop? I mean they keep on motivating me, they keep on finding new ways to elevate their craft you understand, you know, not just radio DJ, finding new ways to, you know, uh, reinvent yourself and making sure you're relevant to whatever is happening in the current society. So for me, that has been the drive. And of course, the number one thing has been passion. I always say that once the passion disappears, that's it. Once I joined the family, I understood the fact that I had to be the best at what I was going to do. And I remember uh, uh, the first when I won the best DJ for West Africa, the Rothmans DJ in 2001, Kamala called me into his office and said, Jigga, now that you win the best DJ, I be you know, if you charge anything where you want, and if you charge where they want, they go pay. And you know, first I was like, but then I understood the fact that, okay, 
you've worked hard to end that stripe. You got to keep that stripe. You have to keep on uh, showing people that there's a reason why you are the best. Evans Mesa, head of the political desk of Joy News, joined the station as an intern. So I'm Evans Mesa, editor here at Joy News. Host a few shows, News Night, which has probably done for more than a decade. Top Story, same. PM Express for the last possibly two years. There's Ghana Connect, which is a show I created, um, which has also been running for give or take six, seven years. Um, also head of the political desk. This year is a very important year for us because of elections. So in essence, professionally, as far as multimedia is concerned, that's that's me in a nutshell. Seth Kwame Watting was a receptionist at Love Affair. It's about the system, reversing the system, so that even if A is not there, B should be able to do the work. My name is Israel Aye. I'm a news editor, anchor here at Joy News Multimedia. And I've been doing this for, what, 21 years. Here at Joy News, I believe that we can practice the journalism way it should be practiced. Having the freedom to do the kind of journalism that is expected of us. So to the teams, consider the brand that you hold. Review or reflect, I would say, upon the vision that has been set and pursue it. The group's dedication to excellent broadcasting has won for it many hearts and minds. Meet the Backmans. Michael Nimoy Backman was a postman at the time. He's now retired. I went to meet him and his family, all of whom are now part of our loyal audience. Well, Joy has been my favorite station since its inception. You know, from the times of um, Tommy Annan Forsen, um, um, Dusty Wayne and Co. For the Backmans, Joy has been the family's radio station. The only son of the Backmans, Jude Backman, says listening to Joy made him a better student. What makes me listen to Joy FM is there are new stories that there are new stories in form, straight to the point. I've been listening to Joy since I was born. Joy FM is the only station I can say that I've listened to, that I, I can keep listening to. Because since I was a kid, Joy FM has been on throughout my life and it's it's given me it's given me something of an edge. My name is Rebecca Phoebe Adoko Bachman. I'm the second born of three children of Mr. and Mrs. Bachman. So what makes me love Joy is their their interest in English, especially how they present their news. And also I have fond memories of Joy, where I had to meet Komla Dumo, one of the most influential journalists some time ago. Know. And I also like this, most of their programs. Um, this Saturday, Home Affairs, Drive Time on Joy, and some other money. Everything about Joy. You know, my, my actually my station is always locked on Joy since I got to know about Joy. This year, the Multimedia Group Limited and Joy FM are 25 years old. We say thank you. We are grateful. Although a big group, every brand within it has its own identity, pushing the limits of journalism and serving its audiences and customers like Interplast, the second to advertise with Joy FM after Coca-Cola. Chief Executive, Hisam Fakri. And at the end of the day, you know, there is no one-way uh, business. I think it was uh, reciprocal. I think we did well for multimedia and multimedia did very well for us. And uh, that's why we decided to continue with the um, with, the, with this relationship and we haven't stopped advertising since day one. And each of these customers has a memory of the multimedia group as a great business partner. Mrs. Rita Abachega, Head of Corporate Communications and Marketing, EcoBank Ghana Limited. A multimedia um, platform is very strong in country. You're a conglomerate, you know, and I believe most businesses are very happy to be associated with you. I mean, we at Echo Bank 
um, felt that you know this was a very important partnership and that um, our partnership and associations with you would only complement our business and so for us you know it's always um, been one of the key um, channels that we have been very happy to be associated with and the list is endless also because of the return that joy, joy brings to the business and so on so i would say that um, uh, joy delivers on a certain promise and that is why we we like to to use your medium to reach our potential clients the success of the group today has been made possible by you our cherished audience it's been 25 years of fearless, impactful, and independent journalism. A tough journey of a team of talented, passionate, and committed people, and a loyal audience poised to win. Fifi Kumsin, Joy News.